Welcome to Business Casual, the show where entrepreneurs find inspiration to start and grow their online business. Today, I'm hanging out with Dominic Cucinota, a filmmaker and content producer who works with some of the world's biggest social media influencers. His work has gained over 200 million views on YouTube, and today he's going to share some crunchy tactics on how to grow a brand on YouTube. Dom, thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. So why don't you start with some background. How did you get into creating content on YouTube? Well, I went to school for film at Temple in uh, Philadelphia, and my friend actually, I was doing freelance stuff, making documentaries and short films, and he had introduced me to his friend, uh, this couple, Jesse and Gina, from Prank vs. Prank. They needed me to help them film like a, a meetup they were doing and just like some, some behind the scenes stuff. Uh, once I did that, I realized like they were getting millions of views at the time. They were one of the biggest channels. I didn't know that it was a viable network or like an option to, I just thought it was like you put cat videos up or like you just <laughs> do these like these random videos. Um, but people were making, they were building empires off of this. And I was like, wow, this is really a thing. And then I would go back to people like that I knew and I'm like, yo, do you know about this person? Do you know about PewDiePie and Casey Neistat? And like people didn't really know. So I was like, that's interesting because these people are so, so popular on the internet, but um, I don't know, it just didn't, it, it, it didn't seem to break through, I guess, my age demographic or whatever. Like, these guys are huge. I really saw what it was going to be and I was like, uh, man, I really got to get into this world. And that's why I started studying the game and learning and, and figuring out the ins and outs of, of YouTube. So Very cool. Yeah. So what was your first big win on YouTube? Yeah. What, how did that come about? The first one was this video called The Proposal um, that I did with my two best friends uh, growing up. They've been dating for forever. So the concept was uh, Maddie Mac makes a song, we play the video, and at the end of the song, the last line is, uh, and someday I hope you marry me, and Sam will get down on a knee and propose her. So that was the whole concept of the video in a long way. Um, so we did that, we shot the video, and Jess had no idea, we were falling around for the whole day, and then she was like super surprised. So that was just the first part. Like once we did the video, I was like, all right, we have something special here, this is good, it's different. Um, but then it was after, once I edited it, and I, I started really realizing how to make this stuff viral. So we just put the video out there, and we were like, if we get 100,000 views, we'll be happy, like maybe one day we'll get a million views. Whose channel um, we put on Maddie, okay. Maddie's channel because the idea was it was a music video for him. Um, so we did that and then uh, Jess's mom sort of like hitting up Facebook groups and this was back when you couldn't embed videos on Facebook so you had to click through to YouTube. Mm -hmm. So she did that and we got about 100,000 views in like 10 days, like two nice. weeks. And then we're like, that, that's cool, like maybe, that, maybe that's it. And then she messaged this one um, uh, Facebook page. It was like a Christian Facebook page. And we had put it up with the title, The Proposal, Maddie Mac. And this page took the video the same as it was and just changed the title to, he loved her since he was 10. This is how he proposed. And from there, it went from like 100,000 to like a million wow. in like two weeks, like a week, a little bit. And that's when I realized like, the power of like the marketing, like the titles and how important that is. So then it went to there, went to a million, and then from a million to four million in like five days, then BuzzFeed picked it up, then Huffington Post picked it up, and then it went, went, went. We hit like 20 million at like the end of the month views. Um, then it steadied a little bit, but we were getting about a million views a month, and now we're at like 34 million views, I think, on that video. And that was 2014. That was the first one where I was like, okay, there's, there's a strategy here. There's 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 a way to, to increase the chance of these things going viral, and uh, that was the first one. I was like, all right, I can we can do more of this. Wow. So yeah. So that's when you kind of got into studying the yes. kind of SEO, how to market a video, all that. All and that, stuff. that was just through seeing what worked with that video, and then that took me a little bit to get, and that gave me a leg up for the next video we did. And I was like, okay, what if we just do that from the jump? And then that always helped. And the next video was thirty four million in less time and it's now 42 million so like these other videos um again figuring out that formula and, and applying that earlier on just increases that chance of of making it viral so so let's talk about growing an audience on youtube what are some best practices that you can share with our viewers on how to grow an audience pretty quickly first thing i would say is it's very difficult to grow an audience quickly on youtube um so i wouldn't say there's any 
best practices to grow quickly. Uh, but there are best practices and things you can do to enhance that. Like what I tell people too is like if you're starting at with zero subscribers, you're starting with nothing. You probably have like a 10% chance to make it really big within like six months or so. Um, if you use certain strategies and certain techniques, certain formulas, uh, you can increase that to like 50% or 55%. So there's things you can do to get up there. If you have the means to post three times a week, post three times a week. Um, I tell people the minimum is once a week. You can't do anything less than once a week and be successful on YouTube. Um, and you, again, you have to do that once a week for three years. In, in terms of titles, and can you think of any titles that you've kind of workshopped recently and hmm. what, what the changes were that you made to make them yeah. better? Yeah. Um, I did a, uh, a fashion show. It was a body positivity fashion show for, um, for women for a fitness brand. That title started out as body positivity fashion show and the whole uh, concept was like Victoria's Secret, like you have all these models and we wanted to make it very inclusive for, for anybody who wanted to walk a runway, we didn't exclude anybody. So that's how we pitched it and then we got a, um, again like the, the like Buzzfeed and uh, Yahoo picked it up, like MTV picked it up and they put their own little spin on the titles. Once it gets out into the internet, you don't really have that much control and somebody put the anti Victoria's Secret fashion show. We didn't want to come off that negative, but that's the title. And then the view just took a, a jump right there because it's going to be a little provocative, a little surprising. Yes. And people are like, oh, what is this? The anti -vic And then they click it. And again, like, it's not like we were that happy about it, but it got us. <laughs> it, it's what they did for their thing. So it was that worked. So, so let's say I'm starting a channel and I want to upload my first video today. What are five things that you'd recommend that I do to try to get the most amount of views possible. One of the things too uh, that I would recommend, and it's more on the marketing end than like the actual content of the video, is reach out to outlets, blogs, magazines, Facebook pages that will resonate with that kind of content. Um, again, we were doing the engagement video, we reached out to wedding uh, wedding pages that had like 5 million likes and all kind of stuff. Uh, I think that's very underestimated is like that gritty work of just like, and you don't have to do it in a spammy way, but just like, cause people don't understand like these pages need content. They want content. So if you have something good to give them, it doesn't matter if you have 10 views or 10,000 views or whatever. If it's a good piece of content, they will want to share it because they want to give value to their audience. Also, a, a big thing too is collaborations um, amongst other YouTubers. If you're looking to, to be on YouTube and it kind of goes with the other point is have people in your video that will be able to, um, you guys are kind of like on an even playing field and you want to uh, kind of reach this a similar audience and you can grow from there. Yeah, um, you kind of see that a lot. A lot of YouTubers, they end up in each other's videos yes. and then they, you know, they take over. And One channel we started um, that we grew very, very quickly was based on that sole concept. I was filming a video for a couple. It's, it's the, it was the girl's channel. Uh, she was pretty popular and they had broken up. So he had an awareness on the internet. So me and my other uh, business partner in this, John, he said, you know, why don't, why don't we make you a YouTube channel as just yourself since you guys are broken up now. Um, but they did a collaboration video first. And then we filmed a video to have on his page because we knew people would go to his page after she posted that video. She had like 13 million subscribers. So we're like, okay, we're, we're in a good situation here. Um, I don't think we were expecting what had happened, but she posted the collaboration video. We posted our video on the channel and the subscribers just started shooting up. So it was like in the first hour, we had like 200,000 subscribers, which is nuts. And we're just watching it throughout the day, throughout the day. And we hit around the 24 hour mark and we have the counter up. We're all eating dinner, like kind of celebrating. And after 24 hours, we hit 600,000 wow. subscribers. Two weeks after that, we were already at a million. And then within a month, we have 1.5 million subscribers on this channel, just within a month. Um, that's not normal. And because we had that connection and that collaboration to piggyback off of, we knew it was good formula for success. Um, from there, we just stayed consistent and we just grew and grew and grew the channel and it became very big very quickly. Um, so if you can, if you're lucky enough to be able to collaborate, uh, definitely collaborate. The other thing that we, we I tell people is like, you want to have your base set up. You don't just want one video. So you want to have 
videos already populated on your page, even if they're at zero views. Because if somebody does discover you and you get that virality and that uptick, you want them to stay, you want them to subscribe. So you want them to have other things to watch, to know who you are and they can learn more about you. Like, all right, I like this guy, I like his content. I'm gonna stick around and stay for what he has next. So are you saying that if I was starting a, a channel from scratch, that it makes sense to build up a little like library of content before I start promoting everything? Yes. Interesting. Um, shoot eight videos in a week. Get two months of content ready to roll out and do that first. That'd be the first thing. Um, this way you have a catalog of videos. So don't worry about the virality. Don't worry about that stuff. That will naturally come. When it comes to YouTube and being successful on YouTube, what's more important? Having high qu cinematic quality videos or personality? Personality, 100%. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's, it's in the name, kind of like YouTube. Like it's, it's, <laughs> And it kind of is a bummer for me, and it sucks for me. Like I went to film school, I went, um, I direct, and I produce like these higher production stuff, and that's what I want to do. But I get to YouTube, and it's funny that like quality is like number seven on the list of like importance. I, I know people on YouTube who will even make their quality, like they'll make it shittier, so it feels a little more connected to the audience. Um, so quality, honestly, does not matter that much on YouTube. Film, if whatever you have, start filming. Film with a cell phone, film, film a, with a pocket camera, whatever you have, uh, do that. But personality is, is definitely number one on YouTube. People will come to connect with you, to connect with the personality. Speaking of personality, we actually have a special guest here today. My sister just happens to be in town and she just recently got started with a fitness blog and she wants to get started with YouTube. So I, I thought it'd be fun to kind of just bring her on and um, see if you could give her some advice on how to get started on YouTube. Yeah, what do you think? Let's do it. All right, cool. All right, Kelly, it's nice to meet you. Thanks, thanks for <laughs> um, sitting down with me. All right, so I'm looking at your blog, kellypierce.com, and you said you do fitness, like healthy lifestyle. Healthy fitness. lifestyle, yeah. Okay. Mental health, fitness. Awesome. Just things that I've implemented into my own life I like to talk about and hopefully help my friends with that too. Okay, that's awesome. Did you have, it says here like, what you learned on your weight loss journey? Did you have like a big, like, wait, yeah. like, tell me a little bit about um, that. About three years ago, I never worked out in my life okay. and I um, didn't eat very well. So I learned about tracking my calories and I started weightlifting and I just fell in love with it. Yeah. And yeah, I lost like 20 pounds, gained muscle and yeah. it's, it, yeah. I'm gonna share that with people like how to do yeah, that. Yeah. yeah, so. How easy it is, is people. Like, yes. That makes sense. Now, so this market, like what I would say, I guess in, in the confines of YouTube, like it's it's very saturated. It's like yes. a lot of people are doing this stuff. Um, so what I like to sit with people and tell them is like, I wanna find like your unique hook. Like I see like you have the, the chocolate protein bars on here. Like do you, What's that about? Like, how much do you change well, your diet, I guess? I'm obsessed with chocolate. Okay. So the whole like cut out sweets, cut out carbs, that kind of thing just did not appeal to me. Um, that's exactly so, what I would make your channel about. Yeah, okay. Like that right there, like find something that's differentiated, find something that's a niche, find something that's unique. To me, that's, that's not that shocking, but like to see that like you do fitness, but like you love chocolate, mix right. that in with your content. Maybe you do, um, what I tell people is also like kind of pick with the consistency, like pick a day. Like maybe every Wednesday you come out with a recipe, a chocolate recipe right. that you can eat that's high in protein, like that helps like after a workout or for a cheat day or something that's not too bad that, mm -hmm. that tastes good. Um, that, can, that would be good too to have on there. And then maybe another video during the week of something else. So, so like I have like a recipe video and then I have other videos about other things as exactly. well, Exactly, right? like well, a good thing that you have a, a blog too is a good thing for people to, uh, who are thinking to come with YouTube content. A lot of people do start off with a blog or an Instagram. That's a good test to figure out what works for you. So mm -hmm. what blog, um, what blog entries did you do that are, that do well? Turn that into a video, or okay. just take every blog post and make it a video. Do that every Monday, and then every Wednesday you have a recipe. Mm -hmm. um, maybe go around and find uh, like interesting chocolate candies or like that people don't really know about, and bring them in, into the fold or something. I would stay away 
from unless you're doing something like crazy different with your workouts i would almost mm -hmm. stay away from that because there's so many everywhere of just people oh, yeah, working okay. out like fitness and if you're not doing anything that different that, that you're not adding anything to the youtube community to, like to watch you working out but i haven't really seen anything where there's a fitness person like, obsessed with chocolate and that's a good niche because i bet you there's a lot of people out there who love chocolate who think they have to give it up or maybe you show them look normally you eat this chocolate it's not that healthy for you this is a good alternative mm -hmm. to stick with that kind of lifestyle um yeah so that's a good like hook and niche that you have that's, and i would that's great that's good idea. i would expand on that so if you have the means to do two times a week i would i would do that like twice okay. a week um definitely once a week and don't worry about getting a fancy camera or anything that like you have a cell phone? Yeah. Use I mean, I'm a phone. student. I don't have much money. <laughs> okay. So Use your cell phone. The cell phone's fine. Use your cell phone. Uh, if you can get like a, a editing program, like an okay. easy editing program, whatever comes with your computer is fine. There's apps on your computer that you can use. Um, all that stuff. Just start doing that and start putting that kind of content out there. Okay. And then take these little recipe videos and cut them down to 30 seconds for Instagram and oh. show people that like, okay, this is what it is go to the link in my bio, mm -hmm. go to my blog to see the full recipe. And then on your blog, you can have the YouTube video or anything like that. And then another thing that helps is at the end, maybe ask people what are their favorite chocolate recipes. And then you have ideas in the comments. And they can you share their own. All that stuff, share your own. Okay. And you can use that as content for yourself. Great. Um, so Let I would ask, definitely go with that theme. Yeah. Um, as far as the length for a video, what's mm -hmm. what's like the sweet spot? The sweet spot, um, the depending on the type of video you're doing. Vlogs, I, I usually tell people like, you don't want to go too much over like 10, 12 minutes. Mm -hmm. um, some content is better longer form. Um, for like a recipe style video, I would try to keep it around three to four minutes. Okay. A lot of people put unnecessary stuff they may not need and that just kind of detracts from people paying attention to the video. Um, don't be afraid to cut a lot of stuff out. Okay. Um, show the important stuff, be fun, let your personality shine through in these videos and you'll be fine. Um, so I would say for recipe videos, about three to four minutes, anything else where you're just talking about lifestyle and, and a healthy lifestyle, maybe you can make that a little longer if there's mm -hmm. a lot of value in there. Um, the other thing is pick fun backdrops and things that speak to your personality. I, I think people, they sit down and think like, okay, I just need like, a ring light and like a white wall. It's like, no, I would. That's boring, isn't yeah, it? Very boring, yeah. So, and then some people put like Christmas lights up or whatever in the background. It's like, yeah, you can do that, but do something that's more conducive to your personality. Okay, so the three things I should start today are one, chocolate is my niche. Chocolate's your niche, <laughs> yep. Two, I can take what my blog posts I've written, kind of make them into videos. Mm -hmm. And third, personality is. Mostly yes. the most important. Yep. Doesn't matter. I can use my cheap camera. It's all you need. As long. Yeah. And, and long again, remember, like, that's your first couple of videos, you get 10 views, 20 views. That's fine. Let, I can't get discouraged. Don't get discouraged. If it doesn't happen at the first month, three months, six months, stay the course, stay consistent. Okay. And you will be successful on YouTube. Okay, awesome. Thank you so right. much. No problem. And thank you for watching Business Casual, the show where entrepreneurs find inspiration to start and grow their online business. And if you're not subscribed to the Growth Lab channel, make sure you click that subscribe button below so that you don't miss our next weekly interview. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.